question on Afghanistan. Um, almost 90% of the over 2,000 healthcare centers in the country are now on the brink of collapse uh, because foreign aid is drying up, foreign donors are not allowed to do business with uh, the Taliban government, or you know, if there is one, if the U.S. especially recognizes one. What is the administration and the White House doing to make sure that does not happen? Well, of course, we have great concerns about the impact uh, on humanitarian uh, access uh, to the country, or any impacts to humanitarian access, I should say. We're doing a couple of things. One, the president signed uh, an OFAC license uh, just a few weeks ago to ensure that humanitarian assistance from trusted groups like the World Food Programs and others can get on the ground. The second step we're taking is working, and our Secretary of State is on the ground in Qatar now, working to see what we can do to get flights up and operational, not just from Kabul, but from other regional airports in the country, because we know uh, that, well, that's also a part of getting uh, individuals out who want to leave, including the, the remaining American citizens. It's also the way that a range of assistance will get into the country. So those are a couple of steps we're taking. It is also a, an issue that we are uh, in close coordination with the UN and with our partners and around the world as well. And the president said that, you know, uh, when asked if Washington will recognize the Taliban, he said that is a long way off. And I'm wondering what that really means in terms of timeline. I mean, is there is there anything you can share with us on a timeline? Well, as the president said, I think it was yesterday, uh, there's no uh, rush to recognition. It is really going to be dependent on what steps the Taliban takes. The world will be watching, the United States included, and they will be watching whether they allow for American citizens and citizens of other countries to depart, whether they allow individuals who want to leave the country to leave, whether they allow for humanitarian assistance to travel, how they treat women and girls around the country. I don't have a timeline for you. It depends on what behavior uh, they exhibit on the ground. Has the president been updated on how many Americans are still in Afghanistan right now? The president receives regular updates from his national security team uh, on our efforts to get American citizens out of the country, so yes. It's just under that. I think the State Department has given uh, numbers. That, as you have, may have seen out there reported over the weekend, there were four American citizens who were able to depart over land. That's one of the ways that we are working with American citizens to get out of the country. And obviously our Secretary of State is on the ground in Qatar, I think still as of this moment, and getting uh, Qatari Airlines up and operational is part of our objective as well. Secretary Blinken spoke to this a little bit this morning, but can you offer any further clarity on who's stuck on these planes? Who are the people? And who is actually blocking them? Is it the Taliban that's keeping? I know there's some issues with documents, but who are these people that are stuck? Are they Americans? Well, again, we're working to get every single American citizen and any individual who has documentation out of and I think our Secretary of State also spoke to this on the ground in Qatar, where he conveyed that he has not received reports, I'm paraphrasing him, so you should quote him directly, uh, that individuals who, who have documentation have been stopped. I would also note that some of these charter flights, and I talked about this a little bit, uh, we don't have an assessment of the manifest. We're not on the ground, right? Um, so we don't, while we are in touch with American citizens directly, beyond that, we don't have an assessment of manifest, what security protocols and measures are taken. So the range of issues that we're working through. Hey, Governor, 